Another way to optimize your bot experience is by tracking your funnel statistics. In other words, where are users most engaged in the bot and where are they disengaging? Where are they getting stuck and dropping off? To show you how this is done, we're going to create a feedback form, sort of a questionnaire, if you will, of just arbitrary questions. You can see that I've already created a block with that content here, and I've sent real people there to provide us some test data, but I'm gonna rebuild it from scratch to show you how this whole process works. Then we'll head over into the statistics side of things and provide some insights. So let's start by creating a feedback form here. I'll call it feedback form and we'll ask as the first question for the user's email. So we'll use the user email plugin. I'll ask, what's your email? And we'll save it to an attribute just called email. Next, let's ask another question being completely arbitrary and say, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite color? We'll provide a couple answers here, red, blue, and green. Okay, and then let's ask one final question, which is to rate the experience one to five stars. What would you rate this experience? And let's provide some emojis here for fun. Okay, we'll do one star, two, three, four, and five. Perfect. And then at the end, let's add a thank you message, something like thanks for your feedback, right? So we have this basic form set up here. Now what we need to do is add attributes at each step of this funnel. So at the very top, we will add an attribute and we'll call it, let's say feedback form. And since we're adding this attribute before the user submits the email, we're gonna add an attribute before each step that the user might take. And we'll call this one, for example, didn't submit email. In other words, if they got here, but they didn't advance to the next step, we're gonna track that. And then after they submit their email, we'll add another attribute replacing that they didn't submit the email by saying that they didn't submit their favorite color for the next step. So I'll type in the same attribute name again, feedback form, and we'll call it didn't submit color, right? So in essence, we are adding an attribute above each step here saying they didn't complete it. But if they do complete that step, then we're going to add an attribute at the next step saying they didn't submit whatever the next question is. So we'll add one more up here before the rating the experience. And we'll again call this feedback form and we'll type in didn't submit rating. And then at the very end, we also wanna track users who did go all the way through. In other words, we don't want this to be the last step, didn't submit rating, because then even if they do, it would still be stuck on that step. So at the end here, we'll add another attribute. We'll call it feedback form and completed. Okay, so as an example, let's say the user gets to favorite color, but they don't answer it. Again, they wouldn't be advancing to the next step, so their attribute would be didn't submit color. And then we could easily visualize in the people tab, okay, this is the amount of people who did not submit this step. And if that's the highest number in the lead form, perhaps that would allow us to know, hey, maybe we should switch this question, either change the wording of it, make it more visual and appealing, or maybe just throw it out altogether. So now that we have this all set up where we're setting the attributes before each step, saying where the user is in that funnel, and then at the end saying that they've completed it, let's head into the people tab and show you some sample data. So instead of using that feedback form attribute we created, I'm gonna use another one called questionnaire. Again, this is the one that I have sent to people and they've provided real data. So I'm going to filter based on that questionnaire attribute seven people went through this form and there were certain bottlenecks throughout, right? Some people went all the way through, other people dropped off throughout. So then I'm gonna filter here based on all the attributes that I set up. So here we have a very simple visual of the funnel, right? You can ignore this not set row right here, but the rest is telling us, okay, three people completed the form, that's great. This is in numerical order. So the majority of people actually submitted the form, which is awesome. They made it all the way through, but then the second highest number of people 
who have a set attribute is didn't submit rating. So that is the third question, I believe. And so that tells us, hey, maybe we should change the wording, add visuals like emojis, GIFs, etc. So this is how you can use attributes to track certain parts of the funnel. You can get as broad or as granular as you need to, but ultimately this is how you can inform yourself about the user experience, see where people are doing things as you expect, where they're not, and make decisions based off of that. So now I challenge you to think of where in your sales funnel you can set up your own tracking to optimize the user experience.